Hello guys, welcome back to Watch Time. Today's movie recap will be a drama and British movie from 2018 called Farming. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. The film follows Eniton, a black British teenager who grows to despise his own racial identity and other black individuals. Trapped between two cultures and fitting into neither, Eniton's desperate need for love and acceptance is taken advantage of by the adults around him, turning him from a kind child into a teenage terror. At home, he endures constant subtle insults. Ingrid, his foster mother, frequently threatens to send him back to Wooga Luga land if he steps out of line. At school, he is relentlessly bullied, which leads him to reject his black heritage and eventually join a white skinhead gang, where he rises to become the leader under the influence of a white supremacist. The film highlights a practice known in 1980s London as farming, where Nigerian parents would hand their children over to white working-class families, hoping it would lead to a better future for them. Eniton, now part of the skinhead gang, chases down a black man who calls him brother, but Eniton responds by punching him in the face. We then flash back to when his parents were searching for a foster home for Eniton, placing an ad in the newspaper when he was just six weeks old. His parents were students at the time. Eight years on, Eniton has become isolated with the foster home, which sometimes housed up to ten black children under erratic conditions. He often played alone with imaginary friends behind the couch and hardly saw his parents, who had become successful lawyers. In a shopping scene, his foster mother manipulates him into stealing a necklace for her, but he gets caught. In front of the shopkeeper, she scolds him, but it's later revealed that he managed to take the necklace and give it to his mother, only to find it had been given to one of his foster sisters, who was the favorite. Distraught, Eniton runs into the street where he is attacked by some boys who set a dog on him, resulting in him needing 15 stitches from the hospital. When his father learns about everything that happened, he instructs the boy to go back to the street to stand up for himself. He tells him to grab a brick, strike his attackers, and not to come home until he has done so. Eniton and his siblings are then taken to Nigeria by their biological parents, who are now successful lawyers. His reintroduction to his native culture turns out to be a disaster, as it all feels very foreign to him. He remains silent for six months, prompting his family to conduct a spiritual ritual on him. At school, he refuses to say his name, which leads to a confrontation with a teacher and his subsequent expulsion from school. A dispute erupts between his parents, leading in the decision to send him back to England after he gets expelled from three schools for assaulting teachers. He returns to his previous foster family. Once back, Eniton comes to believe that his black identity is the issue. He decides to take drastic measures, running into the bathroom to scrub his skin raw with a brush and cover himself with talcum powder in an attempt to lighten it. Eight years have passed by now and the film moves to his first day of the new term at secondary school. As the only black student in his class, he provokes a black female teacher, Miss Deepot, by rudely asking what she is staring at. This causes the whole class to turn against him and a fight ensues. He ends up being suspended from school. On his way out, he encounters the Tilbury Skins, a white skinhead gang that seems fearless of the police. He returns to the school grounds and meets the teacher he had insulted earlier, who attempts to help him. While seated in the yard, he is found and violently beaten by the Tilbury Skins gang, who drag him across the field. Eniton is stripped naked and placed against the wall, where the gang leader named Levi sprays him with white paint, inscribing the words, Keep Britain White. After some time, he encounters the gang again. Initially, Eniton hides as they pass by, but he later overcomes his fear and confronts them. He pulls out a hammer, and Levi approaches him with brass knuckles. Miss Deepot tries to intervene, but gets knocked down. Levi then inducts Eniton into the gang as a sort of perverse mascot, subjecting him to both mental and physical torture and forcing him to participate in violent attacks against black individuals. In an example of the if you can't beat them, join them mentality, Eniton transitions from being Levi's victim to his barely tolerated pawn, driven by the misguided belief that if he can surpass them in the intensity of his racial hatred, he will finally belong to a group. They are eventually chased by a rival group called the Greyskins, leading them to their hideout, a car junkyard. There, Eniton is forced to kill a pig as part of an initiation rite. He slits the pig's throat and is formally initiated into the gang by its leader. Later, the gang attacks Miss Depot in Eniton's presence, and he stands by, doing nothing as she pleads for help. Meanwhile, Eniton's mother, while on a walk, discovers the Tilbury gang fighting with a group of black sailors whom they rob, showing how much Eniton's hatred for his own race has intensified. Confronted by his mother in his room, 16-year-old Eniton is questioned about not returning to school despite his suspension having ended a month ago and his involvement in fights with the gang. Eniton responds by defiantly claiming he is the law. 
Subsequently, we see the Greyskins amassing weapons to attack the Whiteskins, who are unsuspecting and gathered in a bar. While Eniton heads to the washrooms, Levi's girlfriend follows him, intending to seduce him. He escapes, only to discover that the Greyskins have already initiated a massive brawl in the bar. Everyone involved is arrested, but only the Tilbury gang is bailed out. Later, Eniton's mother bails him out. Hitting rock bottom, he finally decides to reach out to his teacher by picking up her phone number. They take him from his home as they gear up for another showdown with the Greyskins in the field. This time, instead of a group fight, the Greyskins demand to face just one person from the entire gang. You guessed it, Eniton. Other members of his gang protest Levi's decision to sacrifice one of their own. Eniton is severely beaten while his own gang deserts him. Later, he finds them at the bar and confronts them about why they abandoned him. Levi tells him that he wouldn't allow him to lead the group. Eniton then faces Levi in a one-on-one -on -one fight. With a single blow to the head, Levi falls and Eniton stabs him, thus taking over as the gang leader. When he returns home, he is arrested after his mother calls the police, seeing it as the only way to rescue him from the gang's influence. After spending several days in jail, his parents arrive from Nigeria and he is released. However, he lashes out at them, assaulting both his father and mother, and then flees from the police to the car junkyard. There, other white gang members attack Eniton, but he is ultimately saved after they find him hanging and unconscious. This event marks a turning point in his life. Six months later, the movie shows Eniton being released from juvenile detention after his Nigerian parents pay a stipend for his education at the Brady Institute with the condition that he studies law. He is given an orientation by his secondary school teacher who received a call from his foster mother. She promises to put her trust in him and guide him through his journey. Overwhelmed by guilt for what he put her through and his experiences with the Tilbury gang, Eniton breaks down. Eniton's life begins to improve when he finds hope and support from a social worker, a fellow student, and a teacher. This leads to his admission to a boarding school in Surrey. Despite facing challenges, he manages to earn a C grade in his exams, which boosts his confidence and belief in himself, moving away from his troubled youth. He evolves into a successful person, earning a master's degree in law, and later ventures into acting and directing at Whale Academia. The real individual behind Eniton's story becomes an actor and director, featuring in various movies and series. While he reconnects with his biological family, forgiveness does not come easily. The film about his life prompts a revelation from his foster parents, urging him to share the truth about his experiences. Adewale, the real person behind the story, acknowledges that the movie may not have led to significant changes, as similar issues still exist in other countries like the US and France. He calls for a change in government attitude and a widespread cultural shift among the people to tackle these challenges. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care, and see you next time.